it guys, this is James with Rogue Duelist Trade and on this channel we talk about current and upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh product and whether or not you should invest your money in order to profit. So today we're gonna be doing another episode for our vendor tips series. We're gonna talk about five basic lessons to make Yu-Gi-Oh more profitable for you. And honestly, these lessons could be used for any TCG. So as a forewarning, I did get into online vending for single Yu-Gi-Oh cards earlier this year when I started this channel, so I still have a lot to learn but I wanna be able to give you guys some nuggets that I've gained on my journey so far. Before we get into the video, if you guys want to support this channel, you can help boost the YouTube algorithm by liking this video. Also, if you're interested on risk analysis videos on upcoming product for Yu-Gi-Oh! or investment content for Yu-Gi-Oh! in general, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video from me. Also, if you go into the description below, you can find links to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Also, if you would like to join my Facebook investments group, you can find a link for that down below as well. All right, guys, let's jump into today's video for five lessons to make Yu-Gi-Oh more profitable. So basic lesson number one is having a separate bank account for your sales. It might sound silly or obvious, but it is very helpful to separate the money from your side business in a separate bank account or checking account. The reason why is it makes it a lot easier for to track how much money you're actually making on your trading card sales. You'd be surprised how easy it is to start losing track of how much money you're actually making and what money you're actually spending out of the revenue that you're making from sales. Having everything in a separate bank account makes you more accountable for the money that's coming in and out. And you can also be more strategic in how much money you're willing to spend out of the revenue that you're getting from your current sales. There's a lot of good banks out there and sometimes it depends on what region you're in. I use a specific bank within the state of Colorado Colorado, which has zero fees until I hit about like 300 transactions and it's very minimal. Definitely look at what banks are available where you are and consider opening up a separate checking account for your side business. Lesson number two, I highly recommend for your own personal long-term play within Yu-Gi-Oh! play rogue decks. Now I wouldn't say this is a hard rule, but it is definitely more beneficial for you as you're investing in Yu-Gi-Oh! And here's why. If you're investing in every single new meta deck that comes out, which is usually between three to six month intervals, you're gonna have to drop a lot of money consistently every single year to play the next best meta deck. But when you play a rogue strategy, for the most part, it doesn't get hit on the ban list and you can always adapt your strategy to whatever the latest meta is using specific tech cards or variants or support cards that indirectly or directly support your rogue strategy. And that's actually the reason why this channel is called Rogue Duelist Trade. I specifically like to play rogue strategies. I've mentioned in past videos, I'm an avid hero player and heroes will will likely not get hit on ban lists. Heroes will always get future support because it's a nostalgic archetype from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And even though the core is expensive, I've always played heroes. So for me, I only incrementally pay for the new support as it comes, where it's far more minimal if you're considering buying the next best meta deck every few months. Yes, you may want to invest in certain tech cards like Triple Tactical Talents coming out of Rise of the Duelist or Forbidden Droplets. But again, it's far more minimal to do that versus investing in the entire Dogmatica strategy as an example, or Eldritch strategy, or Ad Emancipator, you name it. And again, the reason why is you don't want to go and open product, let's say out of Rise of the Duelist, and all of your best pulls are cards that you wanna keep. Because if you do that, now you're gonna start losing money. So not having to have all of the best new meta cards coming out of every single set makes it to where you can be more profitable in every investment you make. Lesson number three, is buy in cases. Now guys, if you don't have money aside to start buying cases, because yeah, I know it's really expensive, definitely do not put yourself in a bad financial situation. I would say for the people that are very serious for investing in Yu-Gi-Oh, buying boxes is very risky. So like for example, if you guys saw the box challenge for Battles of Legend Armageddon that I had with Momojiri, I bought a box and I mentioned in that video, I definitely don't recommend to buy boxes 
and I definitely went undervalued. Now, obviously there's a chance I could have pulled a Utopia or a 10K Dragon and that would have made it a great investment, but you do not want to make investments based on lottery. You wanna be able to beat ratios and usually you start beating ratios anywhere above three cases. Let's say if you buy three to five cases of core product like Rise of the Duelist, it is far more likely that you are going to be seeing a Starlight Rare. And once you start seeing Starlight Rares and core sets, it makes your investments far more profitable. Again, it's all about ratios. The reasons why you want to buy in cases is because you're going to beat the ratios, which mitigates and lowers your risk to where you should be seeing a profit on those investments. Now, I would say for individuals that are just kind of getting their feet wet and investing in Yu-Gi-Oh product, I think the safer investments is sealed product, but more for the collector level product. So collector level product would be like Legendary Duelist Rage of Raw. If you guys saw my risk analysis series on Rage of Raw, I went over that Legendary Duelist sets tend to go up in value very quickly over time, anywhere between one to a couple years. Now, those are the types of product that you could go and buy boxes of, hold on to it. You should be able to nearly double your investment. But obviously, the more you buy, such as a case, two cases or more, the more you're going to make in return. But definitely, I think that's a great place to start is buying into collector product and holding on to it sealed. Or if you're very familiar with the metagame and the marketplace within the Yu-Gi-Oh community for collector value cards, then you can invest in singles as well. But that definitely takes a lot of research and a lot of gut feels in order to kind of get to that place where you feel comfortable doing that. Honestly, I'm still learning myself when it comes to investing in singles. It definitely takes time, but you start to see trends and things start to make sense, but definitely can be a bit more risky. Lesson number four, sell everything that you open. Now, I wouldn't say this is a hard and fast rule that you have to follow 100%, but at least for all of the high rarity, high value cards that you open, if you do decide to open your product, you want to sell it. And I know it's gonna be very tempting. Let's say for example, Rise of the Duelist, you pull Forbidden Droplet, or you pull Triple Tactical Talent, or you even pull a Starlight Rare. You probably want to keep those cards because you wanna play it in your strategy, et cetera. But for investment purposes, you should go ahead and sell those cards and make your money back. Then you can continue consider maybe about one week after the product officially releases to maybe go and buy that product back for yourself. Usually prices tend to settle, but I think it is a good habit to form to sell all the product that you open because otherwise guys, you can very quickly start losing money in your investments. Now, if you guys aren't fully focused on the return and you kind of don't mind if you just break even just so that your side business in Yu-Gi-Oh can help pay for your hobby in Yu-Gi-Oh, then that's fine definitely go ahead and do that. But you definitely want to start building enough return to where you have more money to invest in other product. If you're constantly breaking even, you're never going to be able to grow your business. So to always sell what you get and always get the highest return possible is only gonna be better for you to grow your business. Our very last lesson for this video, which is lesson number five, is sell product on release or wait until it gets future support. So what I mean by that, for example, of core product like Eternity Code or Rise of the Duelist, prices are usually going to be more inflated during the weekend of product release. And that's definitely when you wanna get your cards out of the door and sold. Typically about one or two weeks after product release, the prices tend to settle down and sometimes certain cards may go up and other cards go down. I would say prices tend to go down more than up. Now, if you don't sell on product release, then it's best to hold your high value cards until future support comes out or those particular cards start seeing more meta relevance. So for example, if you look at Rise of the Duelist and Toon Chaos, if you invested in Toon Chaos, you could have pulled Roland or Gear Freed. And if you pulled them, those are very good cards for the Infernoble Knight strategy. So if you didn't sell them on release of Toon Chaos, as you may have seen, the prices have settled down quite a bit for both Gear Freed and Roland. Once Rise of the Duelist comes out with all of the other Infernoble Knight support, then Gear Freed and Roland will likely go up in value. So that would be the time to go and sell those cards because it just got more support in another product. Now in another case, let's just say Infernoble Knights start seeing a ton of meta play and all of the online tournaments going on right now. And then we start seeing deck build for some of the people that topped 
with Infernoble Knights or Dogmatica, then in that example, prices will likely go up for those cards as well because people will start becoming more interested in those strategies and start investing in them. So that is kind of more of an outside variable and if that happens, then obviously you wanna take advantage and go and sell those cards immediately. So guys, that's the end of the video. Let me know what you think. This is a completely different format. I wanna know if you guys like this type of content. If you do, let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you guys think I missed any Anything or any lessons that you've learned, let me know down in the comments below for that as well. I'd love to get your insight and maybe you can share it in a future vendor tips video. Now guys, look out for one of my next videos. I'm going to be doing a case opening of Rise of the Duelist. Now I am early on into my investing and honestly, I wish I bought more than one case because my chance of getting a Starlight Rare is going to be very low, but I decided I'm going to open it for you guys so that you can see what pulls I get from a case. And lastly, I am going to have a risk analysis series for Phantom Rage coming in the next couple of months. The reason why I haven't started working on that yet is because I'm waiting for the OCG to fully release their card list from their Phantom Rage coming out early in August. So once I have all of that information, I can make a more informed risk analysis series. So definitely keep an eye out for that. So guys, again, for the YouTube algorithm, like the video. If you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Thank you guys for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.